Hi, I'm Joe from Mule Expedition Outfitters, and we're going to do a quick walk around of our uh, Dodge Ram uh, 2500 uh, that we built here for the rally. So this was a 2016 um, uh, single cab, long bed, uh, 2500, basically bone stock, uh, tradesman, no power options whatsoever. Uh, it's running a 6.4 liter gas Hemi engine. Got into the shop, basically stripped it down, installed the 3 inch uh, AEV suspension. We supplemented it with um, some 5,000 pound uh, airbags with the uh, built-in um, bump stops. And that's, those airbags are connected to a custom designed um, air leveling system that we can level from the cab or through a smartphone from inside the camper. We swapped out the Bilstein shocks with um, some shocks from the ADS. Uh, quite a bit beefier and they were valved for the extra load of the camper and the flatbed. Um, so we can take a peek at those when we do the rest of the walk around. The rest of it currently is stock. Um, future plans are to upgrade the gears uh, and install ARB air lockers. Right now we're just running stock stock gear ratios and stock differentials in there. The rear winch setup here is a custom mule um, design. Um, it's got a Factor 55 XXL flat link. Um, it's got a come up 12.5 uh, uh, winch with the uh, which controller was actually moved out to the bumper for access and then you've got your your clutch right here um, easy access uh, half inch steel uh, gives you a good um, recovery point off the back of the truck and uh, we knew we, we had to move this thing we were going to be pulling pretty hard so um, there's a basically you can put 2d shackles through here or a 7 8 bolt um, for pulling and uh, you've also got the wheel recovery link back there for an additional point. This is a Norwell flatbed. This is the deluxe flatbed from Norwell of Australia. It's got the uh, integrated um, drawer in the rear, uh, four storage boxes, one in each corner, and uh, a 40 liter water tank, also integrated kind of midship on the cab there, um, which gives you extra water uh, for those longer trips out in the desert and stuff like that. And it went pretty low key with the lighting. Uh, the LED package from Norweld is, is their standard um, LED tail light assembly. We did add the Rigid Industries um, rock lights as backup lights which are tied into the reverse. Obviously these are also standard option on the deluxe um, trays. You got storage there, here. Oh, this one's locked, sorry. Um, so you got storage boxes on all four corners. And in addition, we added the uh, uh, tunnel box from Norweld. This is also an option. And we did a custom fuel filler inside the tunnel box for security. And then this is a custom electrical panel. Not quite finished yet. But it gives us the ability to control power distribution around the truck. So we've got a air compressor breaker, power to the camper on a 40 amp breaker. Um, this is also set up for a future second lithium battery which will be stored inside the tunnel box and then an auxiliary so we can have an auxiliary port here for um, basically just powering other things um, you know like lights and things outside the camper. Um, but this all folds down, locks up for security, you know uh, pretty nice setup, you know extra storage. So this is an eight foot bed with a six foot camper and we'll get to the camper part uh, last if this is a hawk normally you'd have a grand beyond an eight foot but with the tunnel box it takes up the extra, extra space there we do have air trucks on both sides these are arb's uh, remote air truck mounts and they're stainless steel lines so we're running um basically the on the rubber and wheel side we're running the uh, yokohama 40 inch xmt's it's their new aggressive tread, um, extreme mud terrain tire. Um, those are fitted up on a set of AEV Catlas. It's basically it's a 17 inch by 8.5 wide uh, rim. Um, it's a specific rim designed by AEV for running 40s um, and specifically for the Ram. It's got the eight lug pattern. Uh, they are color matched um, to the camper and truck. So normally they come in a silver, matte black and a couple of other colors, but you can paint match them. Of course, graphics all done by Auto Trim um, Design out of Kent, Washington. Did a great job. The graphics do tell a story here. So it's basically Seattle skyline for folks who aren't familiar with it, with Mount Rainier in the background. And then as you pan back, 
you get into the mountainscape of um, Baja, Mexico. So the Gigantes Mountains in Baja are a favorite place that we like to go to. Um, so the truck was kind of built for that purpose, being the, it is the Baja Runner. Um, inside, not too many mods. Uh, we did get the seats uh, reupholstered with uh, cat skin leather, so they're heated and um, and just really nice quality. This is actually uh, new, the cat skin's newest seat covering, super thick because we do have we do have the dog in the cat uh, in the cab with us on trips, so want to make sure it can stand up to his claws and stuff like that. Um, inside, other than the Switch Pro unit we got here, basically doing all the control work of controlling airbags up and down and dump and the lights and lockers and, and, and air compressor, um, we did upgrade to a 10 and a half inch flat screen, um, which actually works out pretty nice. It does all the, all the climate control stuff. And um, basically it converted the tradesman little AM FM radio to something that's really functional um, for just basically controlling everything and being able to get stats off the engine. One key part of the suspension to make this truck really function off-road was the uh, addition of the ADS 2.5 inch um, piggyback uh, shocks which we've got on all four corners. These shocks were specifically valved for this truck, for the weight we were carrying and for the suspension travel we were expecting out of the truck. Upgraded the headlights. These are the new Mopar, uh, kind of the new style headlights with the kind of back blacked out inners. Um, just again, more of an aesthetic kind of a thing. We do have the AEV uh, uh, heat reduction hood. Um, this is running a 6.4 gas motor, so it does produce quite a bit of heat. And just getting keeping everything cool uh, was a big part of you know, especially if we're traveling down to Baja in the summer. Um, the front bumpers, the AEV Prospector, it's got the additional extensions for the high mark fender flares. These high mark fender flares were key in keeping the truck low but still stuffing 40s. Um, hard to do uh, a build like this without getting the truck more, you know, higher than it needs to be in terms of the suspension. So with all the weight we wanted to keep it as, as low as possible and still not rub. So. The high mark fender flares were a key component to being able to do that. AEVs, um, beautiful uh, ram front bumper uh, with the come up. Uh, this is a 16.5 with synthetic cable. Again, another Factor 55 XXL flat link um, to do all the dirty work. As you can see here, we've got basically a, a high lift recovery point, which works perfect with the new ARB jack. Um, this jack is more than enough to lift the front corner or side corner of the vehicle for a change in a flat. Relocated the uh, winch control to the hood here, or to the grill rather. Again, just to make things easy, you don't have to pop the hood to access the, uh, access the winch solenoid. The solenoid actually sits behind the grill here on a, on a custom mount and just gives us easy access just like on the rear. We like things to be easy. So on the front of the truck, obviously, same thing, ADS uh, shocks. Um, giving us a really nice ride and we've got um, kind of changed out the standard whip antenna for a little stubby guy here and that kind of works well with the AV snorkel um, other side of the tunnel box again this is a product made by Norwald of Australia it fits a 40 inch tire pretty well and allows you to run a full-size spare this is a 2019 uh, flatbed Hawk made by four wheel campers out of Sacramento, California. Um, the camper is pretty well outfitted with options. We've got 160 watts of solar on the roof. Uh, we do have the side steps for accessing the roof given the, the height of the vehicle. Um, it is equipped with a hot water tank, a six gallon hot water tank, 20 gallon fresh water tank, and uh, it's got the uh, built in furnace as well. So you've got a hot water inside the truck and it also has an exterior shower so if you need to shower up after hiking or you know, mountain biking or whatever. So you also get the option for the rear spots. These guys here light up the back of the camper when we're accessing the rear drawer or doing any kind of recovery stuff on the back of the vehicle. Driver's side is where all the sort of uh, utility stuff happens. This, this is your hot and cold shower so basically you can plug your shower handle in there and dial up the temperature if you want. Um, we've got shore power. This is a standard feature in all, all the four-wheel campers, whether it's a flatbed or a slide-in, um, <clears throat> as long as you don't get the shell and you get a standard camper like this. 
Uh, this is the back side of the furnace, the hot water heater, and this is your potable water fill. It's all under key and uh, your drain for your gray water coming off of the sink. And then of course your drain for basically draining the tank if you need to winterize it. So here we are inside the Hawk. Um, this is a, again, it's normally would be mounted on a six foot bed, full size truck, but with the tunnel box, eight foot bed, um, this was the perfect fit for us. Pretty much the stock layout for the flatbed camper. Um, you got loads of storage under both seats as well as the footwell storage down here which works great for shoes and you know other stuff um, this rear seat does convert into a bed by just dropping the table down and then moving the cushions around um, moving towards the front uh, we did go with the, the integrated or low profile sink and stove unit that's all the, another option from four wheel we really like it um, a, it looks great, um, but B, it also gives you sort of the use of this whole flat space versus having the, the, the standard option is to have a raised sink and raised stove. So in both of the campers we've had over the last few years, we've always gone with the, uh, with the flush mount uh, sink and stove, which just really works great for us. Um, we do have the weather pack in here. So in addition to the standard canvas, you got your, you know, your, your window there to kind of seal it off but still get light. Um, you got your canvas to block out for you know for privacy, and then of course you got your weather pack, which helps retain heat. And we've camped in this camper um, in temperatures not this one specifically, but another one down to you know 19, 15 degrees outside, and comfortably slept in here with the with the uh, furnace running. So that's been great. Um, one other really great feature about the flatbed is the storage. Um, this is something that's only a, a, an option right now. That's only on the flatbed campers and that's this uh, under bed storage which is huge I mean you can pack clothes right now we just have two cushions that you know make up the remainder of the bed once you pull the bed out but uh, this works great for putting blankets and clothes and just keeping things organized um, again only on the flatbeds currently but we're thinking it might end up being a standard option on the regular slide ins at some point again this is the bed platform slides out to give you that little bit of extra space uh, four wheel does offer a king version which would come out another 18 inches or so and give you a couple more feet of usable space there. This camper is wide enough for a normal six foot person to sleep crossways. Um, fits us, two adults and big dog perfectly, so works good. Um, other than that, two powered roof vents. Keep, the, uh, keep it cool in the, uh, in the summer and, and allow you to ventilate the moisture in the winter. So again, these are, you know, three speed and they go both forward and reverse which work great for just keeping keeping it cool uh, really low power draw and uh, perfect setup got tons of storage this is all for dry goods and stuff we did do a couple of modifications to the truck this is normally your battery box um, we did move the battery from this location to the cupboard right here um, we installed a 100 amp hour lithium battery um, into the uh, normal this would be a dry storage but given the uh, accessibility it seemed like it more, made more sense to put the battery down there um, in addition to that the other upgrades that we did um, was we installed the red arc um, power manager 30 and this basically um, for us running a lithium battery it replaces pretty much all of the uh, electronics that uh, the four wheel packages stock with the campers um, this worked for us. The stuff that four wheel in includes with their, um, you know, camper builds is more than adequate. It does everything that this single unit does. Um, but we wanted a little more, uh, of a readout here. It tells us what our total charge is. So basically we got a hundred percent charge. It tells us we're drawing right now 28 or we're pulling in 28.4 volts of solar. And it tells us how many, uh, amps we're using on the system and gives us other information about battery temperature currently says we're in a float uh, float charge and the uh, primary battery or the, or the house battery is at 13.6 volts it'll also tell you um, if you've got things running how long you have until the battery runs flat which is a nice little feature again a little bit of extra uh, customization that we did for this particular camper um, not normally something on a four-wheel camper build but uh, 
but certainly something we can do for you at Mule if you want to get that done.